Hey everybody, thanks for tuning back into another OTRAM YouTube video. Today we've got a very exciting install. We're doing one of uh, Wits End's 1FZ turbos. Um, so yeah, follow along as we install this and get it ready for this truck to be a lot of fun. Okay, so it's time to go ahead and put our oil return into the pan. Um, you'll probably be doing this in the truck, so the pan will be upside down in the truck. I'm putting a new engine together, so it's easier for me to do this on the bench. That way I can throw it through the parts washer um, when everything's done. But so we're going to take this super awesome template that Joey supplied. We're going to line it up there, and I've already taken a magic marker and marked the center point. And then I'm going to take, he's got a little center punch that he supplies and I'm gonna line that up with my center point center punch that real quick and then I'm gonna take the eighth inch bit from the kit and make sure I'm looking at the right one the eighth inch one's this little one I'm going to pile at that with the eighth inch. There we go. And then he supplies a step bit so we can drill it out to three quarter. And I did not bring a razor blade over, so I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got this out of the package and we want to drill a three quarter inch hole. So I'm going to take a magic marker and I'm going to color in the step that's right past the three quarter line, which would be 13 sixteenths. So I know not to go to that line. And then I'm going to be careful to be straight. I'm actually going to stop the step before three quarter. Nope. Just to be sure, to make sure my dowel doesn't fit. There we go. I got my three quarter in. My dowel fits in. So now I can take the uh, the uh, mounting adapter and the little Delrin dowel and use them to line it up and I'm going to eyeball up level there. I'm going to take the supplied center punch again, make sure I'm levelish. And I'm going to make myself a center point and only one center point. Go back to that eighth inch bit. Again, being careful to be pretty straight. And pilot that. And then I'm gonna switch over to the tap drill. And I'm also gonna use this guide make sure I'm staying pretty straight. I'm going to drill that hole and then I'm going to take the supplied tap, a little uh, tap lube on there, and then use my guide again to make sure I'm perpendicular to the oil pan.
and make sure I'm tapped in there good. Now I can use the alignment dowel and one of the supplied bolts snug that up on there and now that I've got one holding secured I can go ahead and tap the other two This guy off to the side. Actually, eh. I'm gonna start that with my start those two at the eighth inch just to get a good divot going. And then I'm gonna go back with the tap drill. Must have gone right into the rib on that one, but that's okay. And where to put my tap wrench? Here it is. Pull a more lube on there, clean it off. Same thing, use the little guide to make sure we're going in there perpendicular to the face. This one, we're just going to have to tap straight because my guide won't fit with that rib. And then at this point, you know, you would blow this all out, blow all this out, clean it with brake clean, and get ready to put this on. I'm actually going to go throw this back in the parts washer to make sure there's no chance of aluminum shavings going through my new engine. So I'm going to go wash this and I'll bring it back. Okay, so the pan has gone through the parts washer again. I've wiped this all down with brake clean, and I've wiped the uh, adapter down with brake clean. So now we can take some of our Toyota sealer and if that'll focus and it doesn't want to, but anyway, there's our adapter. We're going to run a bead of sealer around our adapter and then I'm going to put a dab in each of my bolt holes. I'm 
And I'm going to start, if I can find the hole, So I'm going to put my little adapter in there. There we go. And I'm going to start my uh, three screws. Sure those are all snug. I got sealer squished out everywhere, and we do. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on the truck and I'll bring you guys back. Okay, so now we're ready to start putting together the oil sending unit. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is take the oil pressure or oil temp sender. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, thread uh, thread sealer on there, and I'm gonna thread that into the long end of the adapter. And give that a snug. I'm gonna stick my open end wrench on the body of the adapter. So I can snug this up nice. And then I'm going to take the little elbow fitting and I'm going to put a pipe thread sealer on the non tapered side. So on the pipe thread side of this adapter. And then on the adapter, you'll see it says British standard pipe thread and national pipe thread. We're going to thread the elbow into the national pipe thread side. And then I'm going to turn that so that it's in line with the, the whole assembly. And I may need to move that again later once everything's put together. And now I'm going to put sealer on the part that goes into the block. And then we're going to go into the, the hole down here where, your oil, where the oil sender originally was. And you want to be real careful starting this. It's at a weird angle. And you want to make sure you don't cross thread it because you're going into aluminum. I'm going to spin that around so that it's straight up and down like that. And then I'm going to take the new oil pressure sender from the kit and again, put some pipe sealer on it. And thread this up into the bottom hole. And I need to scooch it a little bit more to give me some clearance there. And then we can take a 14 millimeter wrench and tighten that in. And according to the instructions, we want the little electrical tab to be facing the fender when we're tight. 
which would be about right there. So we want this tab facing out. And now that that's on, we can move over here and start putting our J-pipe on. Okay, so now we're ready to start putting the new J-pipe on. And your first step would normally be to pull the four studs that are in the bottom of the exhaust manifold. Um, for better or worse, we got lucky, and when we undid these, all of the studs pulled out with their nuts. Um, so we don't have to pull them. What we're gonna do We're going to take the supplied nickel anti-seize from the kit and we're going to put a little bit on the short side of each of the studs. And we're just going to hand start them in there. Get all four of these up in there. And then Joey, who thinks of everything, supplied an e-torque socket to snug those up in there. So, and I'm just going to put a little bit of anti seize on the studs. Now we can take the supplied exhaust gaskets and stick them over the little flared pieces on the J-pipe. And wiggle the J-pipe up on there. And just got to look up the torque spec real quick. Go ahead and dial this up to 46. And we're going to kind of bounce back and forth so that we tighten all these evenly and don't crush the gasket sideways.
I'm just going to go back and double check that. And we're happy. And then we can get out the four studs that go in the turbo flange. And same thing, put a little bit of anti seize on the short side of them. And then we can take our turbo gasket, drop that on there. We can take this monster of a turbo and set it up on top. And we're going to take the special serrated Nordlock washers, stick them on there. And I'm going to put a little bit of anti seize on each of the nuts. Okay, so I didn't show it, um, but we had the turbo on the truck with the engine uh, back in, and I roughly figured out where I wanted the two housings clocked to where it would be mounted and my oil return would be pointed straight down. So now we can take our uh, oil return adapter fitting and install it on the uh, turbo. And I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite on my bolts just as extra security since we absolutely do not want this coming off. Go ahead and stick this on here and there's a, an O-ring in the bracket or in the adapter from wit's end so we don't need any kind of sealer or anything on there. And it was also a really tight fit in the truck to get the oil return hose on. So I eyeballed up kind of where I want it when it's in the truck so that I can go ahead and install it while it's out here. Because it is really tight access. And it basically worked out to where the angle is pointing the same direction as this guy is and that they're kind of parallel. So I'm going to stick it on there like that. And I'm going to go ahead and snug this up and hope that I've got it close to where I need to be. Like so. And then I'm going to go back and drop this back on to the engine and I'll bring you back. So now it's a little bit hard to see, but our oil return line is coming down 
and kind of curving this way and then heading down um, and you're not going to be able to see it. I'm going to climb underneath, but this basically on the other end goes to the, the fitting that we put on the oil pan. So I will go down there and thread that on in a little bit. Um, but I guess first we can do our oil feed. We're going to take the uh, AN to pipe adapter from the kit, put a little pipe sealer on it, and then it goes in the top hole right here on the turbo. And apparently my 9 16th ratcheting wrench no longer ratchets. There it goes. And I've still got the turbo loose on the J pipe until I get the down pipe and everything on. So there are adapters in. And then this is another one. You're probably not gonna be able to see all that well, but we've got the smaller turbo feed pipe and it goes down onto the fitting that we put on the oil pressure sending unit, that little 90 degree fitting that's coming off the straight end of the hose goes on there. And I don't have a camera angle to get you down there, unfortunately. There's that guy loosely on there. And then it kind of swivels up and goes on to that adapter fitting up here. And with the AN fittings, it's kind of easy to cross thread them. So you kind of jiggle them as you're installing them and it makes it a little bit easier. So there's that guy on there. Um, just loosely, I'll go back and tighten all these in a bit. Okay, so now that we've got the turbo and everything situated in here, and I've got my feed and return lines tightened up, and I should mention that before I put my feed line onto the turbo, I poured some oil down the uh, center bearing to kind of pre-lube it and get everything started. Um, we need to relocate our AC line down here. And there's a bracket that's bolted onto the side of the shock tower over here. So we just need to pull that guy off. Which is kind of fun because there's a brake line right here behind it. There we go. So we're taking this big bracket off and putting this smaller one from the wits end kit back on. And it's got a little leg that hops into a hole to align it. So we'll snug that guy on and then move the clamp around. And then we already did some bending and flexing as we were dropping the motor in to get this cleared. And then we can just put the 10 millimeter holding bolt back in here. Go ahead and snug that up. 
And then I can get the insulator wrap. So there's this nice insulating sleeve that's going to Velcro on over that. So, now our AC lines all protected and insulated from the heat and secured. Um, so now we can go ahead and start putting our downpipe in. So I'm going to stick my turbo clamp loosely on the outlet there. Then I'm going to take the down pipe and feed it down and around. And it kind of goes between the fender and outside the frame rail. Are awesome until you're trying to put them on one handed. Looks like I'm going to need a deep socket for that. So let me go grab that and I will be back. And I'm just going to loosely snug this up for now so that I can adjust it. Because we're going to have to go down underneath and put the clamp on and the waste gate on. And apparently there was a random socket stuck up inside of my socket, or random nut stuck up inside the socket. That's starting to get a little stiff and uh, I'll bring you uh, let me take you over to the bench and we'll put the waste gate together real quick and then we'll come back over here and put that on so I ended up uh, forgetting to turn the camera on while we were putting the the down pipe and the waste gate in but basically what it boiled down to was I, you know, I dropped the down pipe down uh, around the outside of the AC line between the fender and the frame and loosely put this clamp on and then popped the waste gate in here and loosely, you know, put the two clamps on the waste gate and jockeyed everything around till it was happy and then tightened everything up. Um, so you didn't miss a lot there. On the wastegate itself, there's uh, a couple of air ports, and the one that's back right here gets this banjo fitting, and then this hose will end up going over to the intake when we put the adapter fitting over there, which I haven't been to that side yet. And then there's also a banjo fitting that goes on the top here that'll end up being just basically a breather for the top of the wastegate that will run a hose over here somewhere 
and then you cap off a port here and two back here and I think that was it you just cap off the rest of the airports um, so that's all in I haven't done the clamp down underneath where the downpipe clamps to the original uh, bell housing bracket I will probably put you up in the air for that so we can see it better because I can't get a good camera angle on it. And in the meantime, I also put the bottom half of the air cleaner back in. Uh, and I've torqued all of the turbo uh, studs. Since all of this is bolted together now, I could final torque that. So let me move the camera around back to the front again and we can start putting all of our uh, intake plumbing on. So I'm going to start with the air cleaner lid and I've already taken the uh, accordion hose off. And for now, I'm just going to set this loosely on here and clamp it kind of in the direction I want it to face. And I'll stick the wing nut on there loosely but I can still swivel it around. And then I've already been kind of playing with these a bit to see how they would fit together. But you've got one elbow with a really big opening on it that goes to a smaller one. And then this hard elbow with the big long pipe nipple, that guy, and it would help if I put the clamp on there first. Gonna go ahead and put my small side clamp on before. I gotta remember how I had that. I think I had that that way, and I just dumped all my clamps on the ground. There we go, we can get our clamps in there and started. And then there's a longer straight hose. That guy started on there, along with a clamp and another clamp. And then there's a uh, straight coupler that's flared. So we're gonna put the bigger end of the flare onto the mass airflow sensor. We're gonna give it a clamp. Yeah. And then we're gonna take this U-shape and we're gonna feed it And they're like so, and actually, I'm gonna feed my mass airflow sensor plug up through here and plug that in before I tighten everything down because that's gonna be tight in there. all that fanciness on and then this breather hose comes off of there and swivels around onto here and then there's a cap that goes on that one I 
I'll stick that on there and I'll stick a clamp on there later. Move that out of my way for a moment. So yeah, then we get a straight coupler on here. Go ahead and stick some clamps on for that guy. And then this 90. And then I'm gonna have to trim this boot down some, but that'll get trimmed down and put right here. So once I get that all done, I'll bring you back and we'll go do the plumbing on the other side and then I'll tighten up all the clamps, but you guys don't need to watch me do that. Okay, so one of the steps in the vacuum uh, re-plumbing process is replacing this check valve right here under the intake manifold. And normally you'd be coming in from this direction with the intake on. Since we're doing a motor rebuild on this, I've got the intake off so it's easy to see what we're doing. Um, and we're just gonna take this guy out of here. And then I'm just gonna line it up with my old one. And snip my hoses so they're at the same length. And then stick it back in here. And I'm going to double check with my instructions to make sure I just put that back the right way. And I didn't. So now that we've cut this piece, we can go ahead and stick it back in here the way it came off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stick the intake manifold back together real quick and I'll be back. So now we can come over to the uh, other side of the motor and we're gonna take this line loose of the charcoal canister and down here where it runs under the intake, being careful of the vacuum switch that's in here, we're going to take the new line from the kit and stick it on there. and stick it on the other end. And then we need to put this little check valve in and we need to find a happy place for it where it's out of the way. I'm gonna put it right up here in this straightaway. We'll put a new clamp from the kit on either side. And then it's hard to see, but there are little arrows on here. You want the arrows pointing towards the engine. So stick that in there, put our clamp on. Stick that guy on there. Put the clamp on. And there we go. And this is to keep, to make sure that the turbo doesn't pressurize the charcoal canister slash gas tank. And then now we can move back here to the brake booster hose and pull that off that end. And I'm actually gonna pull the whole shebang out of the front of the booster. Well, I thought I was gonna pull the whole shebang out of the front of the booster. I guess I'll pull the hose off first. We're gonna take our old hose off. And normally where the check valve goes in, there would be a little metal bracket going from the top brake uh, master stud over this little roll pin right here that would retain that. This truck is missing that. So I'm gonna have to order one before we're all the way finished.
Dang, that guy's really stuck in there. Got it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the grommet out as well. Go, old grommets out. Then we can install the new grommet into the booster. Come on. There we go. And then I'm gonna spray a little bit of silicone on the check valve to make this a bit easier to get in there. There we go, and that's right in. And then I'll order up a new retainer Go ahead and put this end of the hose on. There we go. Now at this end, at the back of the manifold, we're gonna take this uh, hose nipple out. And it looked like a 14, but it's actually a 12. I'll be right. There we go. With a 12, this works much better. So we're gonna go ahead, take this guy out of the back. And then we're gonna take this vacuum tree from the kit. We're gonna put a little pipe dope on the male threads. And then this guy will thread into the back of the intake. Thread that in until the wits end logo is facing upwards. And then we're going to put some sealer on that fitting that we just took out. Thread that into the open end. Stick the other end of our new hose on there. Like so. Then we can take this 90 degree nipple and same thing, put a little sealer on it. and thread it in over here. Come on. And we're gonna have to back up a hair. Mm 
and get that guy in there. And then the hose that came over from our uh, blow-off valve will attach there. Sure, I've got enough hose to get good routing before I cut this. And then I'll come back in a bit and zip tie this up along the loom. And then eventually we'll probably add a boost gauge to this truck but we don't have it yet. So I'm just gonna put the little brass cap in the other port where the boost gauge will eventually live. We'll stack that in there. Um, the only thing that I haven't shown on the video is the, uh, the exhaust mating up. And with the wits end kit, you're gonna cut your factory downpipe right above the uh, right above the converter, where the two merge pipes come together and weld in the wits end adapter. Because we're going full stainless exhaust on this one with the O-Tram kit, I just went ahead and made up a new front cat pipe that goes from the wits end downpipe to our exhaust. Um, so it'll be a little bit different than what most folks would run. Um, so that's in there, uh, and I forgot to show it earlier when we were on the other side, but the throttle cable and the cruise control cable got heat sleeving put on them so that they are kept cool as they go over everything hot. Uh, I've still got to hook my cables back up and I'm waiting for a few little bits and pieces to finish up the actual motor. Uh, but that is the basic turbo install. Um, once, once we get this all finished up, buttoned up, you know, all the systems bled and fired, I'll probably do like a first startup video. But for now, the turbo is installed. Um, you're gonna wanna go back and recheck, you know, all your fastener torques, uh, probably once before you start it, and then again after a couple of heat cycles, just to make sure everything is all good. But yeah, that's the Wits End Turbo install in a nutshell. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe below. If you really like what we're doing, uh, check out our Patreon link. The support is always appreciated. Um, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for tuning in.